Welcome back to Nickels and Dimes. Today, Bo and Tony are sitting down with Olympic gold medalist, Ami Allure. At only the age of 20, she has achieved a gold medal in Cadet Worlds, Junior Worlds, U23 Worlds, Pan Americans, Senior Worlds, and last but certainly not least, a Olympic gold medal from Paris earlier this year. She's the youngest world and Olympic champion in wrestling history and has not lost a match since 2019, going a perfect 37 and 0. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. Make sure you like and subscribe, and let's get it going. There's only one daily fantasy app in the world where you can turn this into $100,000. Better is the best daily fantasy app out there. NFL, UFC, NBA, college football, and more. All NFL season, I'll be giving out my picks to all of y'all, so let's win together. So download better, play better picks to 1,000x your money right now. Use code BONICKEL, that's B-O-N-I-C-K-A-L, and click the link in the description to receive a $200 deposit match. Let's get it. Welcome, thanks for coming on. Uh, what's new with you, Amit? How's it going? going good you know i i think we we never prepare for what life is after the olympics or after like a super big competition so it's just been it's been a lot of media a lot of traveling uh i got i got sick when i came home i ended up getting pneumonia so i had to do all these interviews while trying not to cough and even now i'm still trying to get back to training it's it's strange i think when your body is just put on all that stress you end up getting sick yeah of course talk talk to me about the process you know of course uh it seemed very stressful. There was a lot going on, Olympics. I, I know there's so much extra that goes into that event and stuff, but talk about the process of preparing and getting ready and then going through the tournament. Obviously, you know, you seem like you did pretty well, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, it was similar. I've I've gone to the Senior Worlds the past two years, so I'd say it's, as far as that, the preparation was similar to World Championships. We have uh, peaking, so there's going to be a really intense week, a moderate week, and then a light week. For me, my biggest focus was on not getting injured because I've just had so many little injuries over the past few years and that can make or break the way I wrestle. And whatever I did worked because I was so physically healthy when I when I went out there and I competed. So that was great. And I think all these little things, uh, there's 10 weights normally and for the Olympics there's only six. So I had to dial in on my nutrition and focus on that too. And that's hard to maintain while you travel too. Uh, and then... We also had a whole, because we have specific training partners too, so it was a lot of coordinating with USA Wrestling and other athletes to be able to set up these mini training camps in different locations. And when, when we got to Paris too, there was a lot of planning as far as what we were going to do in Paris. <laughs> wow, yeah, it sounds like uh, like a lot going on. What was the actual wrestling like? Do you feel like you were more nervous, less nervous? You know, from my view watching, it seemed like, you look very calm out there, very controlled, um, prepared well, I'm sure. So w were you, you know, more nervous, more hype? What was the experience like in the actual matches? I think one thing's for sure, I've never felt as focused as I did in the Olympics. I think I, I just realized, you know, today's the, today's the day, now's the moment. This, like, extra stress or nerves, it's not going to help me perform better. And I think, too, just there was so much excitement surrounding it, and I used that to hype me up and give me even more energy. So as I walked out and I saw people cheering and, and waving, it just, it made me feel better. It made me fight harder. Mm. Nice. Love to hear that. It's awesome. Did you, sorry, go ahead. Uh, what kind of, what, did you incorporate anything new into, into the training camp leading up to the Olympics to be so focused and to prevent injury, like any, any type of new training or habits or, or anything like that? I mean, definitely like, uh, focusing on my sleep schedule too. Uh, a lot of times I would I wouldn't pack food with me, and then I would end up not eating for hours. And then when I would eat, I would eat too much. And so it was kind of like preparing ahead. And I also had to do some meal prep, which I've never done before. But for the most part, I didn't change anything. Uh, I I think that if something works, you should stick to it, and you should only add to it, but you shouldn't change it unless it stops working. So for me, I just kept doing, uh, I, I stuck with what I know works for me and what is successful. And then on top of that, I tried to fix little things that I know, like little mistakes. I know for one thing, um, my competitions leading up to the Olympics, 
I would get to the zone and there were situations that I could have scored that I didn't. So we were focusing a lot on very specific situations and also specific situations I might end up with uh, depending on who I draw. And so we, we really dialed in and studied all of the other 15 people in my bracket. Wow. So you, you literally film study every single person that, you know, could be a potential matchup. Yes. Yeah, I do. Is film study like an important part of your prep, your game overall? Yeah, I, I, if I can, if there's a match out there of my opponent, I will always make sure to watch it. So I think there's little things just like there's their stance, the way they move. And that helps me prepare. That helps me be ready. And there's times that it, it actually gives me a big advantage because I know that there is a move that they go for it. And I can literally feel it happening and see it coming just because I've watched the film so much. Mm. Wow. That's good to hear. I don't, I don't think a lot of people in wrestling or, or combat sports in general prioritize that. You know, you hear it a lot in the NBA or the NFL, other, other sports, a lot of team sports, people talk about film study, but I feel like, you know, in, in wrestling and, uh, MMA, there's, there's not a lot of that. So that's really, really cool to hear. Um, from my perspective, you know, just kind of listening to you, how detail oriented your prep is and, you know, your mindset going in to your matches and obviously watching you the way you compete. First off, you know, it's just really impressive, especially knowing, you know, how young you are. Um, but how do you, how, how have you kind of got to where you're at? Like what, what, what has been, you know, your, the, your process in, in building up to this? I'm sure when you started wrestling, it wasn't just all there and developed, like, you know, you, we've obviously had a lot of success for a long time, but how have you gotten to the point where you, you know, know all of these things, um, and, and you prep a certain way and then you're able to go out and compete very freely and very well. Uh, do you have, you know, coaches, mentors, other, other people you look up to, like what's, what's kind of helped you get to this point? I think when I first started wrestling, me and my mom, especially, we always had this mindset of like chasing as many opportunities as we can. And whether it's in wrestling or any other passion you have or school that, so what we would do is there would be multiple wrestling practices in our area, different clubs, different coaches. And I would just go everywhere. I, I never really belonged to a single club for a long time growing up. I was constantly at different places. And I think too, I, I don't know, it just comes for me, this determination to do my very best in anything I ever do. I was, I was competitive. Like even in school, I was always like trying to get a hundred on every single test. And uh, I was hard on myself too, if I, if I made little mistakes. So I think it's just wanting to be good at anything you pursue, but also not being hard on yourself and continuing because if you're too hard on yourself, you're like, oh, why bother doing this if it's not going to be good? I'll just give up. Like you need to have that balance too of like determination and positivity. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just something that I've grown up and lived with and one little goal, one little competition, one after another, after another, and slowly you look and you're like, Oh my gosh, how did I get from point A to point B? But it's just, it's just the attitude and, and all the little achievements along the way. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, so someone like yourself who, who's achieved, I mean, in, in wrestling, it's the, the best of the best. So someone who's had success like yourself, I'm sure there's been a lot of adversity that you faced over the years. What's your mindset on that? And how do you kind of get through that and learn from it uh, as you're pursuing such huge goals? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely had my share of wrestling clubs that I felt like I didn't belong or I felt like I wasn't included. There were a lot of competitions too. I struggled to have a coach in my corner. Sometimes my older sister or older brother would just step in. I uh, definitely had wrestling partners that hated wrestling me. They would find any excuse they could, whether it was an injury, going to the bathroom, talking to a friend, uh, running away from me. So I, I just, I didn't, I didn't feel <laughs> Talking like, about boys and girls? Uh, mostly boys. Mostly boys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I probably yeah. would do the same thing. <laughs> I mean, I know, it, <laughs> I know it is difficult to wrestle a girl, but, you know, we are, we are both wrestlers and it is a sport and it is technical. Uh, and so I, I did deal with a lot of that growing up, but I think that just pushed me to work even harder and, and just prove my, prove myself, prove that I am a wrestler and that I deserve to be there and that I am uh, just as good as they are as far as deserving to be there. Um, and then also I have that competitive aspect of my personality, uh, that, that comes in there too. So just face that over the years, but. Uh, it's crazy how, how much it's improved, how much women's wrestling has grown. It's 
so different now than how it used to be. Yeah, it definitely is. You know, um, obviously for both of us growing up in the sport, the women's wrestling has always been a, th it's been a part of it. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, you know, wrestling girls here and there and stuff, but it, it seems like it's really taken off as of recently, you know, especially with, uh, examples like yourself who are, you know, setting just, you know, this crazy standard for girls. And, you know, you're obviously someone that a lot of these girls look up to now, um, for you, you're, again, you're still so young. So you probably, you know, can think back to role models and, and people that you looked up to, but how does it feel to now kind of be in that position, um, as a role model, as somebody who girls and, and boys, both wrestlers of, of both genders can look up to and kind of see as, as somebody, uh, that they want to aspire to be like, like, how does that feel to just be in that position? Uh, I definitely feel like I have a lot of responsibility, uh, now, now being in that position, it's, hard to understand because I still feel like that little kid chasing all these different practices and opportunities and training camps. Uh, but, but it also, it feels amazing. And uh, it, it pushes me to keep doing what I'm doing and be and continue to be a role model for them and, and help them and help the sport in any way I possibly can. I love that. Yeah, that's great. Um, so you kind of mentioned, you know, your mom, um, having, you know, a, a big, uh, impact on your life. You mentioned, I think you said your brother and sister. Um, so was wrestling kind of a, a family thing for you? Did you have other, like you had your, uh, your siblings wrestled as well, or did any other people in your family wrestle? Yeah. So I'm the youngest of six kids. We're three boys and three girls. My older brother, Ori, was the first one to start wrestling. And then after that, my sister Ronnie started wrestling. And at the time I was four years old and they were, I think like sophomore, senior in high school, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. But I watched them wrestle for quite a while and it looked like the funnest thing I've ever seen. And I was dying to get on the mat and do what they were doing too. And that's, that's how I got into it. And at some point, all five of us, except the oldest, wrestled. But only me and Ori, Ori came with me to, to the Olympics and he helped me a lot with nutrition. Only me and Ori really pursued wrestling seriously. Your family must have been so ecstatic when you won. Yeah, yeah, they they <laughs> they were. You know, like you can you can have a feeling that some that somebody's gonna achieve something or that they're gonna do something great, but it's it's still like when it actually happens, everybody was just so emotional. So it it was crazy, and and the impact of it is it's spreading not only to me but to my family, to my mm -hmm. coaches, and and you just. You don't understand that because a lot of the preparation was telling myself, this is just a wrestling competition. Don't, don't let it get into your head, but it is a lot more than a wrestling competition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. What, what was that like right after, you know, obviously I'm sure you were pumped, your coaches and teammates, your family. So what was the process like, you know, immediately after celebrating, did you do anything special or cool or what was it? <laughs> What'd you do? I mean, the whole thing was unreal. Even now, like almost two months later, I still don't really understand what happened. <laughs> but uh, I mean, as far as celebration, the next day after you win a medal, that whole entire day from morning to night is all media. Uh, one thing that we got to do that was really fun was this champion champions walk, which like right in front of the Eiffel Tower, you have this long runway and there's crowds and crowds of people that just cheer for the Olympians and you get to like take pictures with them. But once I was done with the media, I'd say that what we did is we just went out to eat. Like, that's my favorite thing to celebrate. It's yeah. just food, 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 food. That, that's the best thing for me. Um, that? Me and my, bro my other brother, Aviv, who came to watch right before, uh, all the roads were blocked because of the Olympics. So it's very difficult to drive somewhere. So instead, we decided that we were going to go on a run to a bakery. And we went to this bakery that sold these giant croissants really oh really gosh. really big like i'm talking this big so we got <laughs> one that i think was the french people might get mad on how i pronounce it but maybe chocolatine or pan au chocolat <laughs> i don't know but we my whole entire family we this is pretty much all we ate for a day and a half <laughs> That's awesome. giant, this giant croissant we lived off of it yeah it yeah. seemed like you were in the in the perfect place uh for baked goods then <laughs> yeah yeah all the nice. athletes we were lucky as far as that yeah that's great you mentioned a couple of times, um, the media and, you know, what it's been like, uh, post Olympics, you know, can you, 
dive a little more into that and you know how you're handling it and and kind of what you think of it in general yeah i mean it's <laughs> i said this before um we train to be wrestlers we don't we don't train to be public speakers or uh make videos or all this other stuff that comes with being a well-known athlete and so for me a lot of it has been growing uh just like a really growing experience for me doing all these different interviews and speaking engagements and things like that uh <laughs> do you do you enjoy it or is it like kind of something that you feel like is just part of the job? I do enjoy it as long as I don't do too much of it because yeah. if it's interview after interview day after day, I do want to get back to my normal life and routine. Yeah. But especially like leading up to a competition or something like that, just getting to share my story and and have that you know put out there and recorded, uh, it, it is cool for me and I can look back to, and it's fun for me to watch my old interviews and just see what was my mindset back then. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. So you're, you're going to wrestling practice after this. Are you already back to training? Do you have anything in mind as, as to what's next or, or where are you at with that? Um, well, actually this is more of a coaching practice. I, I worked out earlier today though, but I'm still struggling because I got sick after the Olympics. Uh, this practice is actually my first international competition, Pan Ams, was 14 and under, and one of my teammates back then lives here in San Jose, where I am right now, San Jose, California, and for a long time, she asked if I could come to her club here, and so now I'm like, okay, I will, so, so I'm later, I'm going to their practice, and I'm just gonna, uh, go around a little bit, I think it's a lot of little kids too, so. That's, right. that's well, it's good she asked you this. early because now she has an Olympic gold medalist showing up to her. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. Yeah, I feel like everybody I know, even my elementary school teachers, I'm just getting so many messages from these people I didn't hear from for, for years. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely got to feel amazing to feel that support and uh, that excitement. And, you know, I guess uh, what do you feel like for you – is is next or what is your long-term goals you know how long do you want to wrestle is wrestling you know the the primary passion that you're going to continue on i know you also have some ties to the jiu-jitsu community and stuff with your boyfriend um is there any like mma in the future any jiu-jitsu or is it strictly just wrestling or yeah kind of give us some, some insight into that i really love trying new things and new sports but up until la 2028 my commitment is mostly to wrestling. Uh, LA 2028 is something I've been excited for way before I even qualified for Paris. And being from California, it's just a, it's an opportunity I don't want to miss. So my next biggest goal is training and preparing for that. I mean, as far as after that, there's just so many different things and ideas that I possibly want to do that I, I truly don't know right now. I'm still figuring things out. Uh, I don't think I would ever pursue MMA right now at the moment uh i, I would have fun like learning like muay thai and, and all these different things but not i don't think i would go into the cage and fight somebody <laughs> gotcha yeah no that's smart probably yes yeah. so you're smarter than us yeah there's a lot of happy women <laughs> no out no there i'm right now. okay a little part of me is like that sounds so cool just getting into right. a cage and just like fighting somebody but I, I i don't know it's it's not something i've dreamt of ever I, yeah I don't yeah well <laughs> definitely yeah, yeah i mean definitely stick with your your gut stick with your heart and you're so young you have so much ahead of you and it's exciting to to see somebody so young and you know to have this conversation with you i feel really motivated and excited because you know you're obviously an amazing competitor you're extremely well spoken and um diving a little bit into your mindset it's super apparent uh why you're as successful as you are and uh you know i think I'm been watching you for for a little while, but I'm definitely going to be rooting for you in uh, LA 2028, and looking forward to seeing you achieve more of those goals that you have. So, you know, thank you for your time, and uh, we really, really appreciate you coming on. And yeah, this was great. I hope this interview uh, people will see it and you know learn a lot about you and you know, be motivated as well. Yeah, thanks a lot of me. It's it's like Bo was saying, it's really cool to see someone that just came off the mountaintop, and you seem really grounded, and you know calm, cool, and collected. And I know that can really bring you too high when maybe you got too low in other times. So it's really cool to see that you're on that middle ground and, and just being yourself. So thanks for, for inspiring us all and uh, for being a cool human being. Thank you. Thank you guys. So cool to talk with you and best of luck at your next fight. Appreciate thank it. You're going to kill it. All right. Absolutely. Bye guys. Thank you. We'll Have see you. Everyone.
Alvarez. 